In this lesson, we'll talk about some concepts from consumer mathematics and financial management. The objectives we'll cover are, number one, we'll learn how to use the compound interest formulas, and number two, we'll calculate present value. And actually, when we're using the compound interest formula, we're calculating something called future value. So we're interested in these concepts of what is money worth in the future and what is money worth now. So present value is the value now and future value is the value in the future at some known time. and we'll use the compound interest formulas to help us calculate both of these. So first we want to talk about the concept of compound interest and I'll go through and I'll define some terminology with which you should be familiar but then I'll show you an example to help you understand better what compound interest actually is. Now compound interest is defined to be interest computed not only on the original principal or the original amount invested but also on any accumulated interest. Now in these problems we'll often talk about money that's being invested but remember that this works the same way for money that is being borrowed because when you borrow money from the bank to to buy a car for example the bank is making an investment in you and they're earning a rate of return from you as you pay back that car loan so when we talk about principal and interest and future and present value this could be for money borrowed or money invested now there is a basic formula for calculating compound interest that is earned once per year so this is not the same as simple interest. Simple interest is money earned one time and it might be over a period of years but it's not compounded. Simple interest formula you may remember that interest equals principal times rate times time and that's the formula for simple interest but we're talking about compound interest where interest is being earned on interest that is accumulated and right now we're going to only earn or pay that interest one time per year and we'll use the formula as written here A equals P parentheses 1 plus R raised to the power T. Now I want you to notice the similarities and the differences between these two formulas. In both cases we have a P which is a principal amount invested also uh, we can call that the present value of the money we have a T but look at the difference the T is being multiplied here whereas T is in the power here and in the case of both simple and compound interest we have R which is a rate so let's formally define each of these variables in the formula and then we'll go on and look at an example of how compound interest actually works so A in our formula is the amount in the account at some time in the future. So this is really the future value of the money after interest has been earned on that money or paid. P is the principal or the present value. That's the amount currently in the account and you do hear this referred to as principal but it's the same also as the present value. It's the original value or the value today. R is the annual interest rate. This will be given as a percent and you'll need to convert it to a decimal and I will remind you how to do that. And T is the length of time the money is going to be invested or borrowed. So here's how compound interest works and the formula is going to be a lot easier obviously than doing it in a table like this but but once you see it calculated out line by line I think you'll see a little bit better how it actually works so we're going to take a simple amount a thousand dollars earning six percent annual interest 
that is interest each year and the interest is compounded annually that means one time per year and remember we have that formula and that formula says that the amount in the account is the principal or present value 1 plus the rate raised to the t. So we, we have all the information we need except for I haven't given you a time period here but we do have all the information we would need just to use the formula. But let's go through it by the table first. Now we're only going to look at this for the first four years. We're going to pretend like the thousand dollars is put in the bank and we're interested in the value at the end of the first year, the second year, the third year, and the fourth year and then depending on how long the money is left you could continue to calculate the value in the account. So we're going to start with the very first year and we're going to go back to that simple interest formula that I mentioned. Remember interest is principal times rate times time. So we've got a thousand we've got a rate of six percent and we've got one year. That turns out to be sixty dollars. So using the simple interest formula principal times rate times time we can find the value of the interest that is earned on this investment after the first year and that means our new balance is no longer a thousand dollars it's a thousand and sixty dollars. Now here's what makes compound interest compound interest. After that interest is calculated that first time your beginning balance is no longer a thousand dollars. It is now a thousand plus sixty dollars. And of course we're assuming that you put the thousand dollars in there, you earn the interest and you don't take anything out of the account. So we start with a new balance of 1060 which means our interest the second year is going to be slightly more because we're going to be earning interest on the original thousand plus the additional interest of sixty dollars. That's what's meant when when we stated that it's interest that is com computed on the original principal plus any accumulated interest. So we've accumulated sixty dollars to go with our thousand so the second year when we multiply we take a thousand sixty times point oh six and we end up with slightly more interest sixty three dollars and sixty cents so where does that come from well sixty dollars on the thousand three dollars and sixty cents on that extra sixty dollars that we have so we have a new balance and that new balance is one thousand one hundred twenty three dollars and sixty cents. So how did I get that? I took the thousand sixty. That was our beginning balance. That's our new P, our new principal or present value. At the end of the year we ended up earning sixty three dollars and sixty cents. We add those two together we have our new balance of our investment. Now we continue to repeat this. New beginning balance 112360 a lot of calculations going on here we get our interest I'm going to round it to the nearest penny sixty seven dollars forty two cents so where does this new amount sixty seven dollars and forty two cents come from well it comes from the original thousand it comes from the sixty extra dollars we earned and the sixty three dollars and sixty cents that we've earned so it's calculated on the full amount one thousand one hundred twenty three dollars and sixty cents so this is why it's nice to have an investment that is earning compound interest however that's why it's so tough to pay back a credit card loan or a car loan or a home loan that uh, requires that you pay compound interest We've got a new balance now, $1,191.02 if you round to the nearest dollar. Again, I take the balance at the beginning of the year, I add the interest, and that's how I come up with the $1,191.02.
That means that our beginning balance at the beginning of, the, of year four, and we're going to stop after this and show how the formula is just so much easier to do, but the beginning balance is now $1,191.02. So we've got our original thousand plus accumulated interest of $191.02. It's sitting in that account that fourth year and earning interest. How much does it earn? Well, you have to multiply that amount times the 6% and you get $71.46. To find the new amount in the account, you take the beginning balance, you add the interest, and you get $1,262.48. So there is our amount in the account after four years, $1,262.48. Each year we're earning interest on the previous year's interest as well as the original $1,000 we put into the account. Now this is so much easier if we just use this formula. So we need to identify the parts of our formula we know that we had a thousand dollars we have a rate of 0.06 and we're looking at a time period of four years so we're just going to look at four years and go from there and if we're accurate if we were accurate in the table we should get one thousand two hundred sixty two dollars and forty eight cents we did a little bit of rounding, so there could be a penny rounding error, but I think we're going to be right on target with our answer. So, one thousand is our principal amount. Now, remember the formula has parentheses. You need to put those parentheses. One plus the rate, point zero six. Close parentheses raised to the exponent, that's the caret key, and that exponent is 4 for 4 years. $1,262.47.6, which rounds to $1,262.48. So you see how much easier the formula is. But it's nice to see how that formula is working for us to calculate that interest every single year and then the next year the interest on everything from the previous year plus the interest and then so forth and that's why it's called compound interest because you're getting interest on interest. Okay. So let's look at another example of interest paid just once per year And we'll just start strictly with the formula and we'll use the calculator to help us find these answers. We've got $7,000 invested in a fixed rate investment earning 4% annual interest. So we have our present value or our principal, 7000 I'm just going to identify the parts of the formula. We've got that rate, 0 0.04, remember decimal 4%. Two places to the left, 0.04. Never ever calculate with a percent. Change it to its decimal equivalent. And here it tells us we got two years. So t equals two. Now we're going to insert those values into the formula and we're going to do that in the calculator. Or we could make that table and do two rows. Take us a lot longer though. So let's just use our calculator. And the formula, very similar to what we saw a few minutes ago, this time 7,000. Parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04, close parentheses, exponent key, 2 years. There's our answer, $7,571.20. seven thousand five hundred 
$71.20. It's just that fast. Calculator um, will do that if you know that formula. Now, how much interest did we earn? Well, to find that, the only thing we need to do is look at the difference between where we started and where we end up in two years. So we look at the present or the original value that was invested and we look at that future value that we've calculated and we find the difference between those two. That is, I need to subtract off the 7,000 and now I know how much interest I earned. I earned $571.20. Not bad uh, for money that's just sitting in the bank. So let's take a look at some other kinds of investments or, or loans. And remember, a loan is an investment. It's just an investment made by the bank in you when you borrow that money. So, so to calculate compound interest paid more than once per year, we use this formula. And you will see it's similar, slightly different, because we now have the introduction of a new variable, n. So all variables are defined as before, that is, a, the amount in the account in the future, P, the principal for right now or the present value of our money, 1 plus the rate R raised to the power T, but now it's raised to the power NT, and the rate is also divided by N. And N is the number of times the interest is compounded or calculated per year. How many times do you have to pay interest on that loan? Or how many times does the bank pay you interest on your savings account if you've got money in a savings account? So let's look at a quarterly compounding. We're going to find the value of an account after five years if $10,000 is deposited in an account paying 9% annual interest but compounded quarterly. That would mean that if we were doing the table format, we would have to do it four times for every year. So we would have four times five years, 20 different rows in our table in order to get the answer. Or we can use our handy dandy formula. It's going to help us out and make it a lot easier. So we're going to identify. That's the future value. How much is going to be in the account? I'm not sure about that yet. But we know that the present amount we have is $10,000. Uh, the rate is uh, 0.09. Remember, we're going to change that to a decibel. And N is the number of times per year that the interest is calculated. And think of quarterly as the number of quarters in a dollar. A quarter of something is four. A fourth of something, or four times per year, this is going to be calculated. We're still going to use the uh, calculator to do this, but there's one really, really, really important thing that I want to remind you about when you do this. When you put this in the calculator, you've got to put parentheses around your exponent or go ahead and multiply out the NT before you get started. And I forgot to write T down here. T is 5. So if you want to go ahead and multiply those and say NT is 20, that's great. Or when you put it in the calculator, N is 4 times 5 the time. You have to put it in parentheses or the calculator will do it right. That is, it will follow the order of operations, but the answer won't be right because it will raise it only to the N and then it will multiply it by T because the calculator doesn't know what you mean if you don't put parentheses around that. So let's call up the calculator. I want to start with a principal of $10,000. In my formula, I have open parentheses, 1 plus my rate, 0 0.09, divided by 4. Now, the reason we have to do this is the interest rate we are given is 9% a year. But they're not paying us 9% every quarter. 9% every quarter would be 36% over a year. They're only paying us a fourth of that each time. So that's why we have to divide our interest rate. We're going to raise this to the, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it just like the formula, n times t, 4 times 5. Now, if you don't put the parentheses around that exponent, 
it will raise it to the fourth and then it'll multiply the whole thing by five. It won't raise it to the four times five. So you got to be really careful. I would say that's the number one spot where people have trouble here. So $10,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.09 for 9%, divided by 4, raised to, in parentheses, 4 times 5. What is our value in our account after 5 years? Fantastic amount, $15,605.09. And we're going to round to that nearest penny when we do these problems because, you know, you can't get part of a penny when you go to the bank. So now we're going to look at the effects of compounding on money earned. See what happens as we increase the number of times the interest gets paid. So we're going to invest $2,000 in an account for 10 years, earning 4% annual interest, and then we're going to find the balance in the account at the end of 10 years under these different circumstances. Compounded annually, well that's the once per year, that's that original formula, or put a one here and here and you get the original formula. Semi-annually means two times per year, quarterly, four times a year, monthly, 12 times a year, daily, I know this is not the number of days in a year, but in the financial world, they use 360 instead of 365 days. It turns out it makes less than a penny's difference, and the numbers are just easier to work with. In the days of computers, now they use 365 most of the time, but when it had to be calculated by hand in those long tables, 360 was a number that was just a whole lot easier to work with. And so it's kind of a tradition to use 360, and it really only makes a penny or so different. So, um, but we'll continue to do that because that's what the problems you see will do. Now, continuously compounded interest is something we'll come back to later. You don't very often see interest that is compounded continuously. Um, I'll tell you that you know in each one of these cases we're talking about the value of the money growing and continuous growth is not typically something that you would find with money but you would find it with populations such as uh, bacteria growing in a petri dish or the population of a city or uh, if you have roaches or mice, those tend to grow at what we call a continuous rate because they don't wait till a specific time to um, grow. Like each one of these grows either at the end of one year or at the end of six months, at the end of three months or every month or at the end of the day. And by the way, credit card interest is calculated on a daily basis. Uh, if you read the fine print on your credit card, They'll take your average daily balance, and that's how they calculate the interest every day on a credit card, which makes it so very hard to pay back. So we'll start with annual. And remember, annually means once a year, and that's actually the original formula. But look what happens when you put a 1 in this formula for n. Well, you end up with that original formula, 1 plus r, because r divided by 1 is r to the t. So that's just our original formula. So the amount in the account is going to be $2,000, 1 plus 0.04, and we're looking at this money over a 10-year period. So I'm going to take out my calculator here. I'm going to take my 2,000 parentheses 1 plus my rate 4%. Raise that to the 10th power. That is 10 times that interest gets calculated. And you will see that the amount for that is $2,960 and about 49 cents if you round that 0.488 off to the nearest penny, which is what we typically do when we deal with money. We round to two decimal places. 
So we're going to compare that amount to what happens if we do it semi-annually. So the first time we got $2,960.49. Let's look at what happens when we do this. So now we want to take a look at what would happen if the interest is compounded semi-annually and that means that our n is going to be 2 and so we'll see a very similar situation but instead of compounding the interest just once per year for 10 years we're going to compound it twice per year for 10 years so we'll start out with our original amount 2000 our rate of 4 percent divided by 2 raised to the 2 times 10. And remember what I said is that you've got to remember to put that exponent in parentheses or go ahead and write out 2000 1 plus 0.04 divided by 2 to the 20. If you don't want to make a mistake you can go ahead and multiply out that exponent. Alright so here we go. We're going to put in our 2000 parentheses 1 plus interest rate 4 percent divided by 2 but you've got to tell the calculator it's twice a year for 10 years and that all of that's in the exponent or just type in your 20 and when you do that we get a value of two thousand nine hundred seventy one dollars and about eighty nine cents two thousand nine hundred seventy one and about eighty nine cents so we're looking at the effect of the compounding on the interest that we earn we started with our original amount once per year two thousand nine hundred sixty dollars and forty nine cents when we went to semi annually two thousand nine hundred seventy one dollars and 89 cents and so what you're going to see here the trend is that the more often the interest is calculated the more money you're going to make or in the case of a loan the more money you're going to pay because it's that effect of compounding earning of interest or the paying of interest on interest previously accumulated now we'll look at quarterly we already did one of these that was quarterly we said four quarters and a dollar that tells us that our n is four in my formula 2000 1 plus 04 divided by 4 in parentheses 4 times a year times 10 years so once you get used to using this formula it's pretty easy to remember however you do not have to memorize the formula but you do need to be able to recognize this formula that the amount in the account at a future date is the current amount times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compounding periods raised to the n times t. So 2000 parentheses 1 plus the rate divided by this time 4 times a year raised to, don't forget your parentheses, 4 times 10, calculate a little bit more than before, $2,977.73 if you round that to the nearest penny. So, looking again, 2,960.49. From there, semi annually, it went to 2,971.89. And we just found the quarterly amount to be. $2,977.73 when rounded. Now we're going to take a look at monthly. And when interest is earned monthly or paid monthly, our N will be 12. We're just repeating the process. We're changing ever so slightly the formula to accommodate a new N number of compounding periods time to time is going to be 120 so you can remember to put in 120 or put parentheses around your exponent 
Calculate this guy on the calculator. So I'm going to type in my present amount, 1 plus my interest rate, this time compounded monthly, is divided by 12, raised to the 12 times 10 in parentheses, going up just a little bit more, $2,981 and about 67 cents because the five after the second six is going to round up a little bit. So we want to now look at what happens daily and remember as I said even though there are 365 days in a year it is customary in the financial industry to use 360 simply as a custom, a tradition. It doesn't really make that much difference. You want to try it and see it with 365 versus 360. You're going to see that it doesn't make that much difference. Today the banks can use 365 because they have the computers and calculators that do these things. But remember, compound, lo compound interest loans have been around you know, for a long time, hundreds of years. and they didn't have all this technology uh, and so somebody had to do it by hand and they had to do it line by line like we did that first table so it can get really tedious when you start having to do 360 different rows let's identify our parts to the problem 2000 1 plus 0.04 divided by 360 to the 360 times 10. We're getting up to some really big numbers here. That's a big exponent. It is 360 times 10 for our exponent and it's in parentheses. So I'm going to go back to my calculator and 2000 parentheses 1 plus the rate divided by 360 raised to 360 times 10 2,983 dollars and about 58 cents 2,983 dollars and 58 cents So as we compare these amounts, we can see that we're earning a different amount of interest each time, starting with about 960, then 971, 977, 981, and now we're up to $983 earned on that 2000 if it was compounded daily for 10 years. Now remember the original amount was 2000 so the interest is is the, um, the amount you see here subtract the, the original 2000. So the effect of compounding is that the more often you compound or calculate the interest the better the return is going to be. Now that's better for the bank or better for you depending on whether you're borrowing or investing. Now we have one last one to talk about and that is continuously compounded interest and as I mentioned before it's not very often that you will find a continuously compounded investment or loan. Uh, this is more often used for growth now we're, we've been talking about growth of money and this is more often used for growth of populations populations of rodents or bugs or people or bacteria or anything that's growing that grows not at any particular time period but grows all the time or grows continuously as a result there's a new formula so if if a bank happens to use con continuous compounding where the interest is calculated on a continuous basis we do use this formula a equals PE raised to the RT where APR and T are the same as defined before. A, the amount in the account at some future time. P, the principal or the present value of the money right now. R, the rate of return. T, the amount of time the money is invested. And now we have introduced this new thing called E, but it's not a variable.
often we think of letters standing for variables that is something that's changing in the problem but E is actually a constant and by constant we mean it is the same every t every single time we see it in a math problem and I'll just give you an example of another number that's kinda like E you remember pi and pi is approximately 3.1415 and then some more numbers after that it's an irrational number that we approximate but every time you see pi you've been taught oh put 3.14 in for pi well E is the same sort of thing E is an irrational number it is the same value every single time we use it and it is approximately that 2.7 one eight two eight one eight two eight four five nine four five two three five three six zero oh, two eight seven four seven one three five two dot 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 meaning it goes on forever there is no pattern it never ends it's just like pi it is an irrational number but it's always used in com in what is called continuous growth so when we have money growing continuously or populations growing continuously you will see this letter E and don't confuse it for a variable it is the same value every time now E is actually built into your calculator so you don't have to worry about typing all these values out or you can use that long decimal approximation if you want to be accurate you're going to have to use you know quite a few decimal places on this guy you might round it to five or six and, and not be off by more than a penny but remember that online everything's got to match up exactly in order for you to get credit so we'll use the E on the calculator and I will show you where you find that so let's um, let's find our two thousand dollars compounded continuously our rate was four percent our time was ten years and then we'll go back and compare it to those other values that we found so instead of our traditional formula since it's compounded continuously we're going to use what I like to refer to as the PERT formula it's pretty easy to remember it spells P-E-R-T just have to remember that the R-T is the exponent so we put in our two thousand dollars we put in E and we put in parentheses our rate times our time now notice that there is no n in the exponent it's rate times time in the exponent so two thousand and in order to get the E key I'm going to press second and the LN key natural log key here and that gives me E to the and then it opens a parentheses for me to keep me from forgetting to put my parentheses my rate is 4% 0 .04 times my time 10 years oops let me go back gotta make sure I get that right compare what you've typed to what's there on the paper 2000 e to the 0.04 times 10 that's correct we get two thousand nine hundred eighty three dollars and sixty five cents two thousand nine eighty three sixty five that is the amount in our account if the interest is calculated in a continuously compounded way so let's go back and let me now write in the continuous two thousand nine hundred eighty three dollars and sixty five cents now look at the difference here it's really not a significant difference 
uh, with this small amount of money that we have invested. Now, if we're investing in the millions, it could be more than a few cents. It could be a few dollars or even a few hundred dollars. But as you invest the money, you do earn a little bit more as the number of compounding periods increase, but you get to a point where it doesn't really make that much of a difference uh, after you you know go from daily to continuous. You can see there's a seven cents difference there. Now we want to take a minute to find present value. So by present value we mean that we know the future value already and we're interested in figuring out how much we need today to get a certain amount in the future. So suppose you want to have $20,000 in an account after 10 years. How much would you need to deposit today in present dollars in an account that earns 4.5% annual interest compounded quarterly? We can use the same formula, although they give us a formula for present value, which is just a version of this formula. But in this formula, we know A is 20,000. Now, in all the other problems, we were calculating A, and in this problem, we already know A. We don't know the principal present value today. We do know the rate, 0.045, and we do know the length of time to be 10. So let's go ahead and do some substitution here and do a little bit of algebra before we go over to the calculator. And I didn't write down my N over here, it's 4. Now, P is being multiplied. P is being multiplied times all this stuff. So if we want to solve for P, what we have to do is we have to divide by all of this stuff. And that is, in fact, the formula that they give us. And we'll look at that in just a minute. But let's do this calculation on the calculator. To find the amount P, that's the principal or present value that we need today to get $20,000 in the future. Pull up the calculator. 20000 and instead of multiplying this time I am dividing. Now you gotta be really careful here. Um, make sure you put all your parentheses as you see them in the problem. 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 4 close parentheses raise to parentheses four times a year times 10 years. As you should have expected, this is a lower amount today than it will be in the future because we're investing today earning interest to get an amount to achieve an overall amount of 20,000 in the future. What do we have to put in today? $12,784.64. You know, you, you could just call it $12,785 if you were going to go make that investment. But be careful, round to the number of places that the problems online indicate that you should do. So I'm going to write that down, 12000 Seven eighty four sixty four. Now, if you were to plug this into the original formula and calculate this out, you should get twenty thousand. Because remember, that's the amount we were trying to figure out—the p, the present value, the amount today.
So if you want to know the formula for present value, it is this original formula just like we had. You divide both sides by this guy like we did. And that's where you get the present value formula. Again, you're not going to have to memorize any of these formulas, but you need to recognize their names. This will be given to you as the present value formula. The other one is compound interest formula or the future value formula. Sometimes you will be asked to compare investments. Which one of these investments is a better investment? Now, it's not always just so cut and dry as to look at the numbers because maybe one of these investments is much riskier than the other. But we're going to look at just the pure numbers of it and see which one of these two investments is the better investment. Now, we know it's a better investment if we get a better rate of return. If we earn more money on our money, we know that that is going to be the better investment. So we're going to use the formula for compounded interest, compounded annually, compounded continuously. Again, you don't have to memorize the formulas, but you sure should be able to recognize them. There's the annual formula, and here's the PERT formula. Those are the two formulas. The uh, uh, values are going to be similar. P is going to be 5,000 for both problems. R is going to be 5% for the first one, or I guess I should write that as a decimal, 0 0.05 for the first one and 0 0.048 for the second one. And the length of time is going to be 10 years for both. And we don't have an end for either one of these because it's not compounded a certain number of times per year. It's once per year or continuously. So we'll type these into our calculator and the one that comes out with the highest amount is the better investment. Five thousand times one plus point oh five. It's just once per year, so we can divide by one, but we don't have to. And since it's for ten years, but once per year, we, we could multiply by one, but we don't have to because it would just come out to ten. So that one comes out to eight thousand one hundred forty four dollars and some change. The other one, five thousand. Second key. Natural log or LN key gives us our E. Point O forty eight is our rate times our time, ten years again, and that one gives us eight thousand eighty dollars and thirty seven cents. So the better investment is the first investment. Just be careful. Just because it's a higher interest rate does not necessarily mean that it is always going to be the better investment. It depends on the number of times it's compounded. But in this case, we did get a higher return with the first one, um, $8,144.47 versus $8,080.37.